Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we are continuing our study of the life and letters of the Apostle Paul. I have to begin by apologizing for speaking rapid fire. <laughs> I really don't want to keep you more than seven or eight minutes since I promised to give you five good minutes. And again, I promise that of your seven or eight minutes, there'll be five good minutes of content. We're in 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to end the chapter, verses 18 through 25, and the topic is slavery, particularly Christian slaves who serve non-Christian masters. This is in the greater context of the uh, of persecution that's happening, sponsored by the state, and our response to the state. In fact, our response to everyone. He ended the last section by saying, you're free. That's true of all Christians, and it's true of Christian slaves as well. You're free, but you have to exercise your freedom for the glory of God and the furtherance of the gospel. And he gave us that verse with four short phrases that explain our relationship to everyone other than ourselves, uh, that, that, that teaches us everything we need to know about public life. Honor everyone. Love the brethren. Fear God honor the king. We show everyone respect. We treat everyone with respect, but we have agape love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We reverence God, but we don't reverence any human authority. No human authority has the right to expect us to worship them and to follow them blindly, but we do honor the king and show the king the respect that he deserves, not only as a fellow citizen, but as a person in authority over us. Okay. <clears throat> topic of slavery, and as always, when we come to this topic in the New Testament, we have to say up front, slavery in the Roman Empire and slavery in the American South were not the same institutions, and we cannot read this um, 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 rationally if we don't get that first. According to the Roman Senate, a slave was a person that had rights as a person, not uh, the, uh, you know, uh, 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 a percentage of a person. A slave was a person that had rights as a person. And and as, as far, uh, throughout the history of the Roman Empire, slaves continued to gain more protections under the law. Slavery in the Roman Empire was not the harvesting of human populations to use as livestock. It just was not. The only slaves that were collected to work in the galley or work in the quarries, in the mines, were prisoners and prisoners of war. Uh, slavery was literally the only social safety net that society afforded. Because you had protection, because when you became a slave, your wife was still free, your children were still free. Even if your wife was a slave and, and you were a slave, the children that you had were born free. They, you, you know, so slavery had to be a choice. Um, something that ha that you that you chose to do because of your dire circumstances. Um, Christianity never tried to overthrow the institution of slavery in the New Testament because it was a necessary institution. There should have been a better institution, but there wasn't a better institution. And to to end the social safety net of slavery would have ravaged the poor. It would have ravaged the poor. It just would have. Those who have fallen on hard times just because of the way things turned out in their lives. So he's talking to Christian slaves who have unchristian masters, and he uses Paul's word that Paul uses throughout his conversation about social interaction, and not only between Christian and Christian and husbands and wives and parents and children, but also slaves and masters, he uses the word submission, which is not the same as the word obedience. Okay? It isn't. Submission is something that you do freely out of responsibility to the leadership of someone else because someone else is in a position of leadership over you. Okay? Servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but to those who are unreasonable because this finds favor. If for the sake of conscience toward God, a man bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly, for what credit is there if, when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and you suffer for it, 
you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. For you were continually straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. There's so much here that tells us about Paul, uh, Peter's mental landscape. His, his, in his heart, the landscape of his heart, his thought is so formed by the teachings of Jesus, by what he's read in Paul, and by the Old Testament prophets, particularly Isaiah, and particularly the Suffering Servant passage, chapters 40 through 56. Um, and so he, he calls on all of that in talking to slaves who are working for non-Christian masters, some of whom are harsh and unreasonable and he says listen uh, you gotta you gotta you gotta endure this the way jesus endured what he came to do and when you do you you are fellowshipping with jesus and if jesus did it and he was innocent of all things then we flawed sinful people we have to do it too I know this goes against everything that we believe in the Declaration of Independence in the United States Constitution. I know that if we truly believe this and practice this, there may, may not have been um, a revolutionary war or a civil war. Um, and so uh, I know this is hard for us Americans to accept. This is in no way condoning all of those crimes that are mentioned in the Declaration of Independence or the reason that the Civil War was fought. It is in no way condoning those sins, but it is saying to a Christian person, when you are treated unjustly and unfairly by a person in authority over you, you still have to live like a Christian and act like a Christian. And that means you cannot act disrespectfully. That means you cannot act um, violently. That means you have to always be obedient to what the word says um, doesn't mean you back down where the word is concerned. I mean, remember what Jesus said about turning the other cheek. You can't do that when you back down, but you also can't do it when you hit back, can you? Um, and the, the wonderful thing is that thing that P P Paul mentions in Philippians 3 that he wants most of all. The thing that I strive for is to have the full experience of Jesus, to know the fellowship of his sufferings and to, and, 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 and the fellowship of his, of his death, that, that is what you are enjoying yourself when you, when you hold up under this kind of ill treatment. Okay, hard words, but we know that they're true. And uh, we'll pick up with chapter three next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes, this time almost nine good minutes.